All right, well, hello everybody. Uh, you know what time it is. It's time for another video. And I bet you're thinking Smart Modem Part 2. Well, actually, nope. I'm probably going to contend this thing because I think it's just not fixable at this point. There will be a second video explaining why. I still have to do a little bit more with it. I've ordered something from China. Should be here soon. I'll be able to test one more part of it and then probably going to turn it in as not working. It does have some pretty serious problems, which I will explain in that second video. Um, it does work, you know, somewhat, but there seems to be an intermittent reliability issue with it, at the very least. So, I'm gonna check the ROM with it in that video, but that probably won't come till about next week or maybe the week after. So, unfortunately, we're gonna have to lay this one aside for now. And people always seem to like my videos uh, when they're a bit shorter. I get a bit more watch time with them. But that's not the reason why this video is going to be a bit shorter. I'm, I'm just going to try to be more concise about what I present. And so for this one, I've done all the work beforehand. And now I'm just going to present to you the results, which are sometimes what people want to see. So, as you guessed, I was doing a little bit more digging around in that old building. And I found this. And... It's a pretty beat-up old briefcase slash suitcase, uh, and what's inside is very interesting. So if we open this up, and I've already taken a look inside here and looked at it, of course, but that's what was inside. Uh, so we have two items from JVC. We've got this uh, compact video cassette recorder, HRC3U. Um, so that's what it looks like. We got our power button, play, pause, stop, record, fast forward, rewind, a place where you can plug a camera in. There was a tape inside here, marked two. Um, I haven't been able to read it because this thing doesn't work. This is broken. I've already taken a look at it. And I probably could really quickly show you what the symptoms are. And I think I know what's wrong with it. But opening this up and fixing it would be too much of a hassle. This thing is incredibly complex. Just getting one of the panels open took me like 20 minutes. And it's just even worse when you look inside. Everything's glued together. There's like, it's like a five or six uh, PCB board construction in there. Uh, so it's just really complicated. And um, so that's broken. And that came with its little power adapter here which was on the back, so this runs off 12 volts, so you just line the arrows up like that, so, like that, clicks into place, power on off. Uh, surprisingly enough, the power pack does work, it gives off eh, 14 volts when unloaded. I measured it with my multimeter, so that's good, it's close enough to 12 volts. Um, so that works, and alternatively, you could have had a battery pack as well. I believe you could also have a battery pack on the back because there's a light that says battery, and that actually turns on when you plug it in. So that may be part of the problem. There's a light underneath where you can't see that says alarm that lights up. So I don't really know what the problem is with that, but also in addition, you may have noticed, or you probably definitely did notice, this color monitor from JVC, TM63U, uh, it is really, really tiny. It's so funny. So that's my hand size for comparison. So this thing is, I haven't measured the diagonal of the screen, but this thing is absolutely tiny. Uh, so you have our inputs there, video audio, open 75 ohm termination. Um... Also, runs off 12 volts DC, so portable. You probably could have also had a battery. And underneath here, oh, nice carrying handle there, of course. And underneath here, which is really cool, we have really uh, more complex controls uh, that I could adjust if I ever got this thing to work uh, to suit the computer that it's hooked up to uh, perfectly. So we have a vertical hold control, which is really nice. Tint, color, sub-brightness, brightness, contrast, and volume. So with all those controls, this thing would be incredibly nice because it's really portable. So I could just carry this around to a computer, hook it up, you know, do my work on the computer, carry it to another computer, hook it up and adjust it. So it's, it would be a nice like 
test monitor if I ever got that working. So first, I guess I'll quickly show you what's wrong with that thing, and then we'll take a look at that. Oh, and by the way, also, in this thing, yeah, there were some cables. So we have the audio cables, which I'll probably end up using for video when I hook that thing up, just because I don't have any on hand. And the other thing is that the power adapter plug jack thing that came uh, with this was not in the box. So this thing actually doesn't have its proper cord. I've ordered a cord for it, or I've ordered a bunch of adapters for different things like this, so I won't have to hunt around in my box of cords, because I only had one cord that actually fit this monitor. So it looks like about this size right here. Uh, does indeed plug in, but the problem is that the voltage isn't right. Uh, this is a laptop charging cord, um, so it's 19 volts. That should have 12 volts, and plus, I think I still have the gateway laptop that this goes to, so I didn't want to like cut the end off here. And so, it's quite a large one, it's an unusually large connector. Uh, so now I will go ahead and examine this thing. So here we've got this thing. I'm just going to plug it in down below. Measure the output of this thing. So we've got a positive there, a negative there. Going to flip it on. 13.97 volts. We got a red power LED there. Now I want you to listen carefully to when it's turned off. I don't know if you could hear that. I'm going to do it again. Focus. There's just a little sound inside it, like a little, uh, maybe like a capacitor discharging. I don't know. It's a really funny sound. But um, this does work. And um, even if it didn't, I already gave this thing a nice solid 12 volts with my lab power supply from that thing, just in case this thing was doing something weird. Same exact result. So this won't change, so I'm just going to line it up, get it in, it's plugged in. So now we'll turn the thing on, and we have a red power LED here. And if I could make my tripod go any lower, we have a number display. And if I push the power button, nothing happens, which is the typical behavior. And none of these other buttons do anything. Reset doesn't do anything. Play, pause, stop, eject. Works, of course, because that's manual. Uh, nothing works. Record, lock, on, off. Turn that off. Okay, our counter just went up to three. That's interesting. Reset. Okay, reset. Resets the counter. Now, the memory button displays a small M there. I don't know if you can see that counter doesn't do anything play still doesn't do anything um maybe you have to have a camera hooked up to this i have no idea but what i think the problem is here and i'm just going to turn this off so you can listen to the sound so and you see that some lights flashed there i'll do it again the battery light came on and yeah so i don't know exactly what's going on there but I think since I'm not getting any activity, play, pause, anything like that, I think one of the voltage rails inside is missing. Uh, some regulator might have died or something, um, which was another fault. I was watching another video with a JVC tape recorder or whatever, and the problem was simply that a regulator had died inside that was giving out like the 12 volt or something now this takes 12 volts so i don't know exactly what's going on but you see we have we do have power to the screen uh the power button um does work because when i hooked this up to my lab bench power supply and press the power button the current would momentarily spike way up like it was trying to turn on and then it would go back down and shut off so maybe there's a dead regulator maybe there's a short inside it somewhere but anyway, I'm not even going to try to fix it because this thing is way too complicated. Um, I just managed to take one panel off and it's just a mess inside. So 
There's no way I'm going to be able to disassemble all of this and put it back together exactly as it was. Most of the board are most of the boards are glued together with like the pin headers that they're all connected together. So I'd have to desolder those. And yeah, it would just be a mess. So unfortunately, while I think I could probably fix this thing and it would be relatively simple, I don't think I'm going to. I don't really need a tape recorder. I don't really do um, stuff with uh, VHS tapes. I'm more of a computer repair person, so having like an analog uh, cassette recorder is just not the thing I want to have, but it's pretty cool anyway. Maybe I'll look at it later, but I highly doubt it. So turn that off. It is off, okay. And so that's basically the problem with this thing, and I'll put this back. Here is the portable color video monitor from JVC. And um, the other thing I forgot to show, which probably will make viewing for you all a little easier, is that it does have like a little kickstand there. <laughs> um, and so it tilts it up like that, so it makes it easier to view. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to try and get this thing apart because... As you already know, I've already looked at all this stuff and fixed it because this thing also didn't work. But I did manage to fix this one, and I will explain what's wrong with it. Now, I say that loosely because I'm filming this. I still have not tested um, this monitor's ability to take in a video signal. So I didn't actually hook it up to anything. I just verified that the screen worked and looked fine with no... Um, issues like convergence or focus or anything like that um, and that the high voltage was there obviously and the other stuff so we'll just take off the six screws for this thing um, sorry I stand corrected uh, seven screws actually for this thing two on each side and three on the back um, and this thing also isn't quite the easiest thing to take apart Okay, there's seven screws out. Now we'll attempt to lift the back cover off. This is the tedious part, and you have to be very careful because you don't want to break anything inside. So, there we go. And now lift this thing. And there we go. All right, there it is. Um, just took me a little bit of working at it to get it off. And um, so this is where I have to explain that no one should do what I'm doing. In fact, I shouldn't do what I'm doing because, well, you have to have experience with CRTs, old televisions, monitors, and that sort of stuff contain high voltage. So that right there is the anode cap. Um, so it contains dangerously high voltage so i've heard stories of people dying and so you really 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 shouldn't open one of these things unless you know what you're doing because that can uh, remain charged even for years with this thing powered off so always discharge it i'm not going to discharge this one because i'm not gonna take that off um i'm just going to show you what's inside so if you'll come with me here we go so we have a quite a nice little crt uh the neck board actually is this thing right here, I say quote-unquote the neck board because it's not actually attack attached to the neck. Um, if you can see, there's a little... So, that actually, that gives the best angle, sort of. So, as you can see, the neck, um, the thing right plugged into the socket of the CRT is just that little white thing there inside. Um, and that contains wires that go to this board goes to this board, goes to this board. So it's quite a compact construction. There's a speaker. Um, that's the deflection yoke in there with all the adjustments. I, of course, haven't messed with anything. Um, so it's really interesting. This thing just runs off 12 volts. Uh, nothing fancy. Um, it draws about 1 to 1.5 amps. So obviously I have gotten this thing to work and power on, but it initially didn't. Um, and so I'll tell you what the problem is, although I think I threw away the bad one. Uh, yeah, it's gone. Anyway, um, the fuse. So a really worrying problem. And the only problem pretty much was the fuse inside this thing was blown. 
Now, normally when I look at a CRT, if it has a fuse and the fuse is blown, that pretty much means, Connor, you shouldn't be messing with this thing. It has a pretty serious fault. But this time I was like, okay, well, whatever. I'm just going to replace the fuse and see what it does. Now, the even sketchier part is that this was a 2 amp fuse, which, you know, kind of makes sense if it draws between 1 and 1.5 amps, though that might be a little high. Um, this is a 2 amp fuse, and I didn't have any on hand, so I, of course, replaced it with a 5 amp fuse. Um, and you know what? It kind of paid off. The thing turned on, a little bit of weird thing was going on with the vertical deflection, which I'll take a look at if it's still present. But this thing actually did power on. There was high voltage. I heard it. The screen lit up. I got a raster. Um, I didn't mess with any of the other controls. But um, the fuse, you probably can see it down in there. Right there. It's that thing right in there. Um, the fuse was really hard to get out because I had to take that board and that board out. Uh, the fuse didn't look blackened at all. It just looked like it fell out from vibration, old age, or something like that. It didn't look blown. So I put a 5 amp fuse in there. I used the overcurrent protection feature of my new power supply, which I'll talk about probably in a later video. It's pretty nice. Um, I current, not current limited this, but used the overcurrent protection. Set it to 1.5 amps. So that way, if the current went over 1.5 amps, it would immediately shut off the output of it. And it's a pretty fast uh, response time for that kind of thing. So just, I didn't want any fires starting if I decided to use a 5 amp fuse. So um, the other thing was that um, this thing worked. Uh, the screen lit up. Everything was good. The only thing I didn't really test was video input and processing. Let's see if that's still good. But... Um, Again, I'm just going to, since it doesn't have a proper cord, I'm just going to use my lab power supply and sketchily wire it in. Um, and I kind of know what I'm doing, but again, just don't try this at home. Uh, I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to this thing. And this is like the first, you know, semi-dangerous thing I've worked on. So I'll be right back when I've hooked this thing up. So here's the thing on the casing of it. Uh, the negative is the center pin. Of this thing so it, it is it does have a pin in the center and the positive is the um, outside shell around it or whatever I like to call that anyway um, the negative however I believe let me see if I can get this set up the negative pin right here it's gonna be kind of hard to clip to but it is shorted to the case at all points or not over there I guess um, just around this shield here that, that screw, that coax connector right there, um, those are all shorted to that negative um, pin, or probably ground, common ground. Um, so we're just going to hook to that thing with the negative, and the positive goes to this little connector inside it, right there. So that's how I have it hooked up. Kind of sketchy. Kind of sketchy, I know. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try giving this some juice. I'll actually turn it around so you can see what happens. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's going to exhibit the same behavior as before, but we'll turn on my power supply. Um, just got it. It's a pretty nice one. And I'm going to just verify the settings. So we have 12 volts. The current limit is 1.25 amps. The overcurrent is 1.5 amps. Everything else is good. Verifying the polarity is good. Just going to move these screws out of the way. Um, put them over here. Turn off my meter. Get metal things away from this thing. Verify that everything looks good. And... Hook up the positive lead there. Um, so, going to move the camera back a bit. Power this on. Make sure that's off. So, no current draw. And now I will turn it on. All 
right. We do have an image, as you can see. So it does appear to be working somewhat. Um, I did bring all the knobs back to their original positions when I turned this off, like in the center. So before the brightness was kind of cranked all the way up, it looked much brighter than it does now. I'll, of course, correct that. But as you can see, um, interesting, we're not even drawing an amp this time. Uh, so definitely the brightness being up affected that because we were drawing like 1.25 amps uh, last time. But there you go. Power lights on, screen comes on, everything's everything's looking good. So I'll feed some video into this and see what it does. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those enthusiasts who happens to have a NTSC signal generator just sitting around. So I do all my testing with a DVD player, gives composite out, so perfect. Um, and let's see, so uh, the only thing I happen to have on hand at the moment at our house uh, is White Christmas. So, you know, kind of a Christmas themed thing. Uh, so let's hope I don't get a copyright strike from this. <laughs> okay, it's loading. So let's see what it thinks of White Christmas. Uh, all right, turn it on. Here we go. Okay, we've got a vertical hold problem. All right. Oh, that looks terrible on the camera, but it looks really nice now. So 1.12 amps on our current draw. And we got a white Christmas menu screen. How nice is that? It's been about an hour later. Um, it's dark outside now, but I've just messed with all the settings on here enough. I think there's like 15 of them, uh, that the picture looks, you know, somewhat okay. I still have to calibrate it a bit more, but I will probably come back tomorrow with my test patterns and do that and adjust things like linearity and stuff. But, um, I'm pretty happy with how it looks actually. It's a really nice little monitor. I'm so glad it works. Um, so there you go, and now it's gonna, well, it's flashing because of the shutter, but looks pretty nice. Actually, you know what, I'll turn off the lights and see if that makes it look better on camera. Yeah, there you go. It looks really good in person, though. It's, it's hard to just compare it. it. The colors look a little washed out on camera, but in person they're really uh, full and rich. Like, that's a really nice red. And I see a little bit of, you know, bending, pin cushioning, I think, on the bottom and top, so I'll try and fix that. And the reason they're black bars is because this is a 16x9 DVD, so it's not filling the entire screen, but yeah. Looks really nice. See if I can get rid of those things by adjusting some. Let's see. That's about right, I think. That's a good amount of contrast. That's the volume knob. And there's the screen brightness down here. So that adjusts the G2 voltage. It's hard to get that to look right. So somewhat like there. And then here, yeah, I think that, that looks pretty good, actually. It's got some bending, but I think it's pretty good. So yeah, that's all for today. It's only drawing almost an amp. And uh, looks pretty good. It works, as far as I can tell. So 
There it is. And then here is the CRT in the back. So you can kind of see, well, maybe not actually. There's always a slip up or two during a change in command. There, the filament is glowing inside there. You can see that. So, yep, working nicely. All right, well, that's all for today. See you in my next video about the smart modem. Bye.